Hi everyone, it's Marissa with Bumblebee Apothecary. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the GAPS diet. If you've never heard of the GAPS diet, I'm just going to give a brief little summary of what it is. I'm going to talk about my and my family's experience with it and then what our plans are in the next several months. So the GAPS diet is a diet that Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride designed to heal different mental health problems such as dyspraxia, dyslexia, autism, ADD, ADHD, schizophrenia, and depression. Since publishing this book, she has actually published more books healing different health conditions with, with basically the same diet, more of physical type health conditions rather than mental ones. So what this diet targets is healing the digestive system. It's pretty interesting that the digestive system and the health or the illness of it really affects the rest of our body. It's like the seat of our health and the condition that our gut is really determines the health of the rest of our body, even mental health. So making sure that you have a healthy gut is pretty important and powerful. The GAPS diet focuses on having the patient consume traditional, very nourishing foods like bone broth, a lot of different soups and stews made with bone broth, lots of meat and vegetables, lots of healthy fats, probiotics, um, fermented foods of different types, things like that. So just really giving the digestive system a rest and a break from processing things that are harder to digest like starches, sugars, grains, things like that. And then just helping to also rebuild the population of healthy bacteria in the gut. So my personal experience with the GAPS diet started in 2011 is when I decided to do it. Previously, I had tried a bunch of different things. I was having trouble with low energy, lots of headaches, and then terrible cystic acne on my face. So I had tried different things. I tried going all vegetarian, which was not a good idea. I tried um, eliminating different groups of food for a while to see if that would help. Some things kind of seemed to help for a short time, but then in the long run, it didn't really make any difference. The, problems were still there and I wasn't, wasn't really getting anywhere. So I, I did really want a new direction. So I looked into it and I thought, well, this is pretty different, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. And I did, and I'm so glad. It literally changed my life. I honestly don't think I would be where I am today with good health, with everything that I'm able to do, high energy, and best of all, my two beautiful, healthy children too. I really don't think any of that would have been possible if I had not done the GAPS diet and gotten my health back. I did it for a full two years and then I gradually transitioned off of it to a more traditional whole foods, um, nourishing traditions type of diet where you basically consume everything. You don't leave any type of food group out, but you just make sure that it's properly prepared, like soaked grains and still um, incorporating a lot of fermented food into your diet and things like that. And a really, really nice thing now after being healed with the GAPS diet is that I can really eat whatever I want. I can go to people's houses and eat whatever they have. I can eat whatever desserts. As long as I keep it within like a 20% of my diet, I can have total freedom and it doesn't bother me. Once you're healed, you really should be able to eat whatever you want and it's so great. I just try to keep 80 to 90% still the nourishing whole foods, nourishing traditions, Weston A. Price type eating. So that was my experience. My husband also has had experience with it. He did it and it helped him out so much. So then our most recent experience with it is we've been pretty much, like I said, doing the Whole Foods traditional nourishing traditions, Weston A. Price type diet. And we decided to go back to the GAPS diet for about six months or so for a couple different reasons. So the first reason that we're going to do the GAPS diet again um, and actually not all of us are going to do it, just my son and my husband are, my daughter and I don't really need to, 
but my husband wants to revisit it again because it's been about five years since he did it and he's done some other things for health and he just wants to kind of finish up with revisiting it for a, a last time and just kind of finalize some gut healing. He's currently finishing up heavy metal chelation, so he's doing the Andy Cutler chelation protocol, which if you're interested in chelating heavy metals, that is the way to go. There are so many wrong, dangerous ways to chelate heavy metals, and this is a very gentle, safe, effective way to go. So if you're interested, I can talk more about that. So one of the things that we learned doing the chelation is that mercury and candida have a symbiotic relationship. So if you have an overgrowth of candida in your system and you also have mercury in your body, it's really hard to get rid of the candida. So the first time that my husband did the GAPS diet, it really helped him a ton from where he was with his health at the time. And then we wanted to just kind of go back to it after going through the chelation and getting rid of the mercury so that now we could get rid of the candida and get the gut balance restored properly. And then the second reason is that my son, who is 17 months, um, has a little bit of a rash on his face, which I think I've been kind of paying attention to it and I think it kind of got worse like when we were on vacation and we were eating other stuff that we don't usually and things like that and he's a little fussier than I think a healthy baby should be. so. Just knowing us, his parents, and what we've been through, I think it'd be good to just kind of get him back to square one. With my daughter, I introduced grains not until 18 months, which was really, really good. And then my son, I wish that I had waited that long. It was a little after a year, I think, we introduced grains. Looking back, I wish I had waited with those. I think it would have been better for him to just kind of hold off on those. But once you have more than one kid, it's kind of hard to... <laughs> it's harder to control all of that type of stuff, but... I think if I would have known that it would have been important, I could have done it. But anyway, I just think it'll be good to go through the GAPS diet with him and just get everything settled. So what we've done so far is yesterday I went shopping and got a whole bunch of vegetables, made sure I stocked up on meat, and then I had the different bones and things to make the broth and ordered a probiotic and got some things to make some fermented vegetables. Today is our milk pickup day for our raw milk, so we'll have more of that. We can make the yogurt and kefir and stuff like that. And so we're kind of ready to start. We've been kind of easing into it, doing as much as we can before actually going full force just to kind of use up some other food that we had that isn't GAPS legal and stuff like that. So tomorrow is gonna to be the day when we actually start this. And I'm going to keep updating you guys on how it's going and just kind of do a video here and there showing like some of the recipes that I make, um, how it's helping, and just some different experiences that will hopefully be helpful. And I'd also like to know if you have ever done the GAPS diet, have you ever heard of it? Have you ever done any type of a diet that was supposed to heal anything or do anything? How, what has your experience been? Has it been helpful? Um, do you have any questions? And just let me know in the comments. All right, thanks so much for watching. Bye.